It's time for Health Futures with Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. This is Arizona's only show dedicated to providing you with expert advice on how to live a longer, healthier, and happier life. To learn more, call 602-264-8009. That's 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Bob Roth. Good afternoon. You're listening to Health Futures, taking stock in you, and I'm your host, Bob Roth, and it must be Friday, and indeed it is. We're coming at you live from the Scottsdale Air Park, Money Radio Studios, 1510 AM, 105.3 FM, and the World Wide Web, moneyradio1510.com. If this is the first time you're tuning into our show, our show is about how our older adult population can live a healthier, happier life. And how do they do that? They do that by listening to your, this show, Health Futures. We've been on the air for now nine years, and uh, what makes this show so great is our guests. And today is no different. I'm really pleased to have my good friend and uh, somewhat frequent visitor, Lynn Sue Flood. And she is the Director of Community Engagement for Hospice of the Valley. And for those listeners, they may have heard a different last name, Flood. They might have. Yes. And, oh. <laughs> and you have recently gotten married. Yeah. And to this gentleman who I've not met yet before, but I've heard such great things over the last couple of years about him. He's Tom a, Flood. Yeah, he's a wonderful man. I can't wait for you to meet him, Bob. I'm Thank you for having me again today. And, and it's so good to have you on the show. And the work that you and Hospice of the Valley do in our in our community is just priceless. It really is. And and I know I've shared this with our listeners the last time you were on. You and your hospice made my family's life so much easier when we were dealing with my stepmother, Noodles' wife, Maddie, when she was on that journey. And, uh, you know, your, your nurses, your social workers were, were amazing. Everything that my clients had experienced over the years, I truly understand. And it was our first experience as a family, an immediate family, dealing with hospice. And you guys made it so special. Oh, I'm so glad that we were able to care for her and for your whole family because I know – it was hard for noodles. It was really. And, and you know, the, the great thing, and I would love for you to talk about it, because it just doesn't stop when the person does pass. So, you know, I want our listeners to really understand what it truly means to receive care from Hospice of the Valley, and even once that person has passed. Yeah, because that's when uh, the grieving really begins in earnest, and the missing, and the having to transition from life with them to life without them. Right. So that whole bereavement counseling on the back end for um, family members and, you know, they were family caregivers in many cases. It's that's a whole nother journey. You know, you did the hospice journey and now you have the grief journey. Right. Right. And, you know, I'm looking back, um, you know, the last time I had you on was November 24th 2020 so this is really the first time you've been on since maddie's passing and you know i i want the i want the public to know how appreciative i am the nurses were amazing they really were and Aww. and they made they made it so easy i mean it gave us the opportunity to be with maddie and not having to worry about all the other things that come along with it. So. Yeah, because there is a lot um, to, to take in, and you have a lot of questions. And when somebody's there to answer, reassure, the fear and the anxiety just lessen, don't they? They do. And and what was really nice was, you know, both Susie and I, you know, had met with the nurses from hospice, and obviously our name must be on the list, and, you know, we get mailings from you all. If it's not monthly, it's quarterly about grieving and counseling and just letting us know that you're there for us yep so, we are if you we have the resources and sometimes people aren't ready for grief counseling right away they need some time uh, and then out of the blue it hits them that they're kind of stuck and they're not sure that they're getting over their sadness and that's when they reach out and we're we're there of course we're there and and everyone does it differently Everyone grieves yes. differently. Some people can move on rather quickly, and some it may take months, if not years, to get past it. And that's okay. Everybody is different. You're right. Absolutely. So, 
beside a, a name change <laughs> and, um, and, and me and my family having a personal experience mm-hmm. with Hospice mm-hmm. of the Valley and hospice in general, mm-hmm. um, tell me what's new. Tell me what's going on. Well, we're so excited because our dementia care and education campus is months away from opening. It is coming together so beautifully. Some of the furniture has arrived. Uh, We are still waiting to get it just absolutely perfect before we begin opening. And we'll be doing it in phases. We will open in phases because, as you know, there are five components. Uh, There's the inpatient care home. There is the assisted living there is an adult day club for you to take someone with dementia so they can have stimulating activities. They get that intergenerational enrichment with the child that. care center right next door, that. the preschoolers. They're actually there now. They are That's up and running. Prince of Peace, wonderful preschool, is operating um, that part of the campus for us. And then, of course, the education center, and that's the teaching place, and that is where it's open to everyone in the community, from health professionals to family caregivers, to teach them the skills and the best practices for the best dementia care. Oh, so true, so true. And and I had um, Mary Beth Gallagher, Dr. Gallagher, on with you in June of 20, and really talking about the programming that hospice of the valley has in the dementia area it's amazing it it is really amazing there's a there's a a room in there that's built like a bedroom it's a skills lab so it's everything from how do i get someone out of bed or into bed or into a shower all of the techniques how do i change a brief how do i do all of these things that you need to do as a caregiver and um you can watch a video or you can have somebody lecture you or you can actually hands-on get some instruction, and that really makes a difference. So it's it's really going to be a magical place. Of course, there'll be um, grief support groups that take place in the Dove Cafe, which is the memory cafe that is part of the campus. And it's just going to be an opportunity for anyone with questions, because if you instantly find out you're the going to be a dementia caregiver you're you're not equipped no and there are so many kinds of dementia and so every single person with dementia is going to act a little bit differently knowing what to expect knowing how to bring them joy make them feel safe and make connections when they can't speak anymore and language goes away those are all important things to providing the very best care and the highest quality of life yeah, that, indeed. And certainly there's so many questions, so much uncertainty when you have a diagnosis of dementia and, and just really the angst that the family goes through um, is, you know, it's it's hard to really comprehend. It well, really and is. they're experiencing that. I know you're familiar with the term that that kind of grief where they have someone standing right in front of them, but they're not really there. Right, so it's anticipatory grief. They're not gone yet, but they kind of are gone, and so they're going through that anticipatory grief ahead of time. It's a day by day watching the let their loved one disappear. It's it's a ve- they're a vessel of who they used to be. And speaking of that, uh, Susie and I just saw a movie the other night, and I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. With regards to dementia, is uh, a new Billy Crystal movie that dropped last year that I totally missed. I it, think I missed this it's, too. It's called Here Today. Okay. And it's it's playing on you know I think the HBO station. So I I would encourage you and our listeners to hear see this. I mean, Billy Crystal is one of my favorites. He's an incredible actor and. You know, what he displays to the audience about dementia is is something worth seeing. Well, and, and you know, I'm here's the thing. People say, well, they're not the same. There is still a, a residual part of that person oh, yeah. there. And that's what you celebrate. Instead of, you know, focusing on what's not there, focus on what is still there. So true. So true. Real quickly, before we go out our first segment, where is this dementia education Campus. campus going to be it is being built and if you drive by it's gorgeous at 44th street and indianola which is just south of indian school right in the heart of arcadia yeah real easy to get to close to the airport you listen to health futures taking stock and you we're down one segment i've got lynn sue flood here in the studio from hospice of the valley stick around we got three more to go we'll be right back
Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures, taking stock in you. I'm your host, Bob Roth. And if you're just tuning in, I've got Lynn Sue Flood here in the studio. She is the Director of Community Engagement for Hospice of the Valley. If you missed our first segment, please go up to our website, go to Cypress Home Care Dot com. Click on the media button. Third button down is radio show, and you'll catch this one and many, many more. So, Lin Su and I, we spoke a little bit about the dementia and education campus that they are opening in the upcoming months. Right there in the heart of Phoenix, uh, Arcadia, actually, 44th Street in Indianola. Did I say that? Indianola? You did. And uh, you can see all the buildings up, and as you shared with us, some of it is open, and They'll be opening it up in parts and pieces over the next couple of months. And before you know it, it'll be fully open and operational. And it's so exciting. I mean, I remember when this vision came together probably about five or six years ago. And it was a dream. And now it's yeah. a reality. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? It's going to be such a great community resource, Bob. And I, and I think, you know, before we dive into this next piece, because I want to talk about this uh, event, the marquee event that Hospice of the Valley does every year. Um, Hospice of the Valley has been so community focused. Um, I think you guys are coming up on 50 years. 45 this For, year. 45 yeah. years. Can you believe that legacy of caring? And, and you really think about it. I mean, hospice care really has only been around for about that long. So, you know, Phoenix was one of the early adopters. Hospice of the Valley was it. And uh, you guys, you know, I shared in that first segment what you guys did for our family. And you've helped so many other families through a really difficult life process and and making it a lot more comfortable and easier than it would be without you all so oh, thank well, you well no we're it's our honor you know it's it's amazing to think about because it was back in 1977 just a handful of volunteers said we should open a hospice we should begin a hospice and there was no reimbursement from medicare so they right. did it as volunteers and then this year alone we will care for 22,000 patients and their families. Wow. And, you know, I've had a chance over the years to get to know Paul and Dr. John Eckstein. And I, and I know that it was their dad, Dr. Albert Eckstein, that was, I think, the very first medical director and really helped put this vision together. It's just amazing the legacy that has begun and lasted 45 years and for the next 45 plus years. Oh, let's certainly hope so. And you know what's really lovely, I think, is because there was no reimbursement in the beginning, that's still in our DNA. And so as a nonprofit, we don't turn anyone away who needs care. And you talk about us providing hospice all those decades. As we've been in the community and seen the need for people with chronic illness and serious advanced illness needing care before they get to hospice well before they need it we've innovated new programs to help care for them earlier in their illness and so and even we do now primary care in the home wow you're not even ill but you may be too too frail to get to your doctor so we'll bring the doctor to you so we have so many and then of course dementia so many more programs that can help people with all stages of their health and you also, uh, you stood up a pediatric program called Ryan House. I mean, you guys were the, you, you helped give birth to that, and, and, and that is continuing to flourish. And, and there's, you know, for me, it's, it's hard enough to deal with older adults that are actively dying. I, you know, it takes a special, special people to deal with the children. Yeah, children are medically fragile. They have conditions as well, and um, you know, we want them to have the best care. So, yeah pediatric program for palliative and hospice care wonderful absolutely wonderful so you have a marquee event coming up march 12th yeah. and it's over at the jw marriott scottsdale camelback inn resort and spa yeah i hope to see you there well, i plan on being there <laughs> I, but I, I want you to really share with our listeners because it's called aha yeah. And it's a art, food, and wine experience. It is. It's a beautiful event. It's our signature event, our one signature event of the year. We do have a golf tournament as well at a Greyhawk. But this is, you know, a beautiful dinner at the Camelback Inn. 
uh, an art auction with lovely pieces of art. And we have uh, other things as well, you know, restaurant experiences and trips. We have a trip to Greece uh, this year that'll be up for auction. Letitia Fry is going to be I know our Letitia. auction tainer. And you know she is just full of vim and vigor. And she actually was a volunteer for Hospice of the Valley. So she knows our mission very, very well. Nice. We also have a guest of honor, and you probably know him as well, Chef Mark Tarbell. I see that. One of the things on the uh, auction block that I think is going to be very uh, exciting and a lot of people are going to want to bid on it is Mark and his dear friend, Barb Fenzel, who used to be um, a cooking instructor and had chefs like Jacques Pepin and, and uh, Julia Childs and, of course, Mark Tarbell teach uh, people how to cook for many, many years. She, is, she and Mark are teaming up and they're going to prepare a meal and teach a meal, teach how to prepare that meal to a group of people and then serve it to them at Tarbell's. Mm. So it will be, I think, a super fun item to bet on. I think that item will get a lot of money. for, And, and let's face it, it is all for Hospice of the Valley. And, you know, you said something at the beginning of the segment about the fact that you don't turn anyone away. And I remember it was either you or Susan shared the amount of money that you are giving away and care every year. And if I remember correctly, it was somewhere in the neighborhood of twelve to fifteen million dollars. Well, this last year it was ten point seven million dollars in charity care alone. Charity care. But then wow. there are community services as things that bumps that up closer to twelve. Amazing. I, it really is amazing. You turn no one away and, and let's face it, I mean, these are families that are vulnerable and that need help and it's it's a true blessing. It really is no that you are doing this. No one should be on that end of life journey alone. Right, and nobody. And and that, that there's nothing sadder than somebody passing all by themselves. So, it's nice that you guys are doing that kind of work. And and really, you know, about your honoree, Mark Tarbell. I've had a chance to meet him several times. And you know, while he doesn't really probably know my name, he's always so friendly and. You know, he, he'll look at me and know who I am or, or look, know that I'm familiar and say hello to me. So what, what a great person. Great he, person for our community, too. He is such a giver in the community. He's extremely charitable. He has lent his time and his talent to so many. So we're honored to honor him uh, at this event. And it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. We've got some other chefs coming because they, they know he'll be there. Sure. No, that's wonderful. So as we wrap up our second segment, I want to tee up our third segment talking about the volunteer program. And, uh, you have an an incredible volunteer lead that I've known for many years, Stacia Ortega. Did I say her name right? You did. And Stacia has been with you all for probably the better part of 15, if not more years. And, just amazing the work that you guys do on the volunteer program. So can you give us a little tee up? And if we can finish it now, we'll finish it now, but we'll cover it in the third segment. Oh, yes. I definitely would like to talk about our volunteer programs. But before we leave AHA, I just want to say we still have tables available. And Ooh. we would love for folks to come. And if they want to come, they can just call us at Hospice of the Valley. Or they can go to our website, hov.org. And in the search bar, type in AHA. And AA. H A uh-huh. exclamation exclamation <laughs> wait A A H A or go to our events section it'll all it'll all come up but we would love it if folks want to come and have a beautiful evening we have the Hamptons so I hope you stay late uh, because the Hamptons is a great band and they play at the end so it's a lot of fun everybody loves the dancing at the end as oh. well beautiful dinner beautiful art auction beautiful cause it's been I think three years since I last attended because we paused it for 20 and 21 right so correct yes thank you COVID no thank you COVID. no thank you COVID <laughs> but but so glad that it's back on the program and and just such a meaningful program the money and the funds that you all raise goes to all that care that you're talking about you give away for people that can't afford care yeah we would just love to see folks there and then as for volunteers we'll kind of tee it up for the next segment we have so many opportunities for people to volunteer their time and their talents to enrich the lives of our patients and families. And we can talk about all the different ways in the next segment, but it really is an extra layer of love that we can surround patients and families with. We couldn't do what we do without our volunteers. We have 2,000 of them. Wow, and and I'm gonna just take a swag, or ask you to take a swag at it. How many of those volunteers had experience 
the work that HOV does, percentage. Many of them did, and if not us, they've had a hospice experience somewhere else. We're at halftime here at Health Future. Stick around. I got Lin Su Flood here in the studio. We'll be right back. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures, taking stock in you. I'm your host, Bob Roth. And if you're just tuning in, we're in our second half here. I've got Lynn Sue Flood here in the studio. She is their Director of Community Engagement for Hospice of the Valley, otherwise known as HOV, not to be confused with the high... The high traffic lanes. Uh, yeah, yeah, the traffic lanes, you know. <laughs> but but I, I, I will tell our listeners, if you missed the first half, go up to our website at cypresshomecare.com. Click on the media button. Third button down is radio show. We covered a lot of material in the first two segments. We talked about the great work that Hospice of the Valley does here in the community 45 years of work and service that they have been providing we talked about my own personal family journey we also talked about their big event that's coming up aha and <laughs> and you can learn more about that at hov.org lin su says there's still tickets available so please 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 go up there it's a great event and we've got a great band that's playing what's the name of the band the hampton the hampton so it's definitely you can Get a you know you can auction for a private dinner with Mark Torbell. You can get you know auction for these great trips, and you can dance your pants off late <laughs> at night. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. No, that's great. That's great. So you know, we teed up this segment to really talk about the volunteer program because you know Linsu shared with us two thousand volunteers. They have an extraordinary program, and you know, I personally didn't go through it, but my daughter, Samantha Jo, Sammy Jo, went through it back probably about 16, 17 years ago with the, the person that heads up the program, Stacia Orte Ortega. Ortega, yes. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I would love to learn a little bit more about that. And then there's something else that you know you were doing, too, and I want to talk about that college partnership program that kind of dovetails into the volunteer program. Yeah, sure. Well, it, we do. We have 2,000 amazing souls who wrap our families and our patients in extra love and companionship and support. And we really couldn't provide the beautiful care that we do without them because they are, you know, they're the cherry on top of the Sunday. They are the sunshine that comes into these homes and these patients' lives. Sometimes it's with a furry dog or a bunny, or we even have a ther pet therapy cat. Uh, sometimes it's someone who uh, knows that her patient loves tea and she packs tea party and pastries oh, and they have it. a little tea party and talk about their their day or their week it is just so beautiful I <laughs> we have this fabulous volunteer who by the way quit his corporate job went back and got his social work degree and now has been hired by hospice of the valley but started out as a volunteer and he went into a patient's home this man does not cook but he volunteered to be the companion to a gentleman who had ALS and was paralyzed from the neck down. Mm. Before that illness, he loved to be an amateur chef in his kitchen. He would cook for his wife and his daughter. Be beautiful, elaborate meals. And it pained him that he could no longer do that. So we found this volunteer who agreed to go in and be his arms and his, you know, his hands and prepare this meal as he told him what to do. Chop those apples smaller, use the Aleppo pepper, which is Turkish and I now own because I didn't know it was that good. Uh, and, you know, you need more brown sugar in those, you know, pork chop glaze. And they would prepare these weekly meals I and then it. sit down as a family and eat them. And he said, sometimes I have a bad week. We get there. He opens the fridge. Whatever falls out is what we're making for dinner. Um, but he was that person's arms and the most beautiful thing he said to me was, you know, my friends used to visit me early on, but I could always see in their eyes they were a little bit sad because they knew me the way I used to be. Right. But my volunteer, Jeff, has only always known me as this, and he loves me the way I am, and our friendship is so real and strong. 
So there's just the opportunity to really make a difference in someone's life when you volunteer like that. Um, out of the goodness of your heart, because there's no paycheck on the other end. You're giving to another human being. And you can ask Jeff what he received was so much in return. And he was so inspired and touched by it that he now changed his profession and oh. works for the same agency. You know, it, it, it's interesting. I, I, We all remember quotes, right? And one quote I remember, it was one my dad taught me many, many years ago. It was from Winston Churchill. And it goes by saying the following, you make a living out of what you make. You make it a life out of what you give. Oh. And it's so true. I mean, you know, it just feels so good to be able to give, you know, whether you're giving of your time and your love or you're giving money, uh, just mm -hmm. it, it's something about that that just enriches our lives. And totally. it just feels so good. And, and it's a conscious decision. You know, there, there's another saying, something like, Volunteers don't necessarily have the time. They just have the heart. Mm. So, so true. they make the time. They make the time. And, you know, speaking of making time, you make the time. I, look, you are incredible at your the work that you do. You know, being the director of community engagement, you know, you have to wear a lot of hats. And one of the things that you do very well is you get the message out there via the social media uh, outlets, if you would. And uh, I, I think every volunteer graduating class, you're in like every one of those pictures. I get so, to I get to teach part of the orientation for our volunteers, the very first session. And so I'm always there. And I can't tell you how many people have said, oh, we saw that picture of volunteering on Hospice of the Valley on social media. And it reminded us that we wanted to volunteer there. So here we are in class now. Right. So we love to do that. And we, of course, are always posting what amazing things our volunteers do. But it isn't me, Bob. It's our amazing volunteers. And it's my pleasure and my joy to let our community know the good works that are going on all around us. And that's that's the thing I love about you, Lynn Sue. I mean, you're so modest. You have you have star power and people know who you are. You may not know who they are because you were coming into their living rooms for over 30 years. And the great work. Oh, that was a long time. I know. <laughs> I don't, you, you look like you're still 29, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but still, I mean, you know, that, you know, you get that and that helps so many others and, and especially those volunteers, they know who you are and, and, you know, just being there to be supportive and, and teach and do the work that you do is, is, is very commendable. So thank oh, you. Well, the, you know, the lovely thing about being on TV for, uh, 31 years <laughs> is <laughs> that people, uh, I think trust you. You know, you've you've tried to, to do your best to be fair. Uh, you've made connections in the community so they know who you are. Um, so I I think when I'm able to say things about Hospice of the Valley that I believe in with my whole heart and soul because I know this agency and I know the staff and I know the cultural beliefs that they have and their reverence for the mission, um, that people are confident in the care they're going to receive. Uh, so it's lovely to be that messenger, but really every single person who wears a Hospice of the Valley badge is the same kind of representative because they are all mission oriented and they just want families not to be on a hospice or a chronic illness journey or a dementia journey on their own because there is support there. And our right. dementia program, which goes into people's homes, it's free. It's amazing. And you know, you, you, the beginning of this segment, you talked about that gentleman who was a corporate guy who volunteered and then got his uh, social master's in social work and now is employed. Your journey is not that dif different. Your, your journey, you, you experienced hospice. Care in my family, in exactly. Your family. And, and, and circled and, back all those years later. Is that amazing? Yeah. And you walked away from a incredible broadcast career to do this work because you know how meaningful it is because you experienced it as a family and, and now you're doing this for other families. It, it's funny. People think and intellectually they do know what hospice care is, but unless you have it, until you have it, then you really, really understand how valuable it is. I'm one of those people. I mean, I, for, 28 years our company has been providing care in the community and we work 
really well with your team mm-hmm. and I see the work that is being done with our clients but to experience it firsthand was really special and I got a chance to see that and, and experience that and it, it is amazing we're it really so glad is. we could be there for you well thank you you hear the music we're down three segments we got one more to go uh, we didn't really talk about the college partnership so why don't we tee off with that okay we'll and then that. and then I'm going to ask you to kind of answer any questions I haven't asked and maybe leave our listeners with some final thoughts. You're listening to Health Futures Taking Stock in You. I'm your host, Bob Roth. We're down three segments. We got one more to go. We've got Lin Su Flood in the studio. She is the Director of Community Engagement for Hospice of the Valley. Stick around. We'll be right back. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures, taking stock in you. I'm your host, Bob Roth. And if you're just tuning in, I have got Lynn Sue Flood here in the studio. She is Director of Community Engagement for Hospice of the Valley. And we've covered a number of things in the three segments. I won't go through all of them because I want you, our listener, if you miss them, go up to our website at cypresshomecare.com. Click on the media button, third button down's radio show. You'll catch this one and many, many more. So, Lin Su, I want to cover in this last segment, we only have about 10 minutes, I want to cover the College Partnership Program. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk a little bit about White Dove Store. And I also want to really dig in and just talk a little bit more about hospice and why there's such a fear, a fear factor, and why people should overcome that. So let's get this party started. Let's talk about the college Partners program. Partners program. Oh, it's amazing. So we have college students that uh, go to any Maricopa Community College and then starting in the fall, GCU as well. And also some ASU students may be joining this program. It, it allows students to volunteer as a companion for a family who has a loved one with dementia to give some respite to the family caregiver about four hours a week. Uh, The student can go in and provide some companionship. It could be watching a program with them, taking them on a walk, visiting with them, doing activities, puzzles, reading, anything that just gives the caregiver a little bit of a break and some time to themselves. Um, There's training involved, obviously. Uh, The students are, you know, doing this for a semester at a time. And, of course, everything is CDC guidelines for safety. Sure. Uh, But it does show that it improves quality of life for patients and caregivers as well. These students are exposed to something that may trigger a desire to go into the dementia workforce. We need a dementia-capable mm-hmm. workforce of the future. So they may be inspired to seek a career in this area because they've been exposed to it. They certainly will understand dementia better. It's going to touch all of us. They will have much more insight and education about the disease. And they get they can get a certificate for completing two semesters. We know that students very often have transportation issues, so there are stipends for travel, whether it's a gas card, uh, there's also uh, scholarship opportunities. So some students who need help with their tuition, if they are volunteering four hours a week in this way, wow. they have scholarship opportunities. Wow. So really, it's a win-win for everyone. No, it truly is. Besides being a, a good thing to have on your resume, uh, because it is good to do this type of stuff, and, and employers definitely look for that so our listeners just you know take note of that you know volunteering and doing good in the community is just a really good thing to have on your resume more importantly for me is to bring more people into the workforce you know we know the world has a workforce issue but we in healthcare, we're dying we don't have enough nurses we don't have enough therapists we don't have enough cnas it's frightening so this is a great opportunity not only just if you want to get into the dementia field but just getting into healthcare gives you a yes. lens into it. And it also gives you an opportunity, and I'm, I'm very passionate about this, it gives you an opportunity to work with people and to really understand that the person that you are volunteering to help and assist, 
puts their pants on the same way you do. They, they, they like and dislike maybe the, some of the same things you do. There's some commonality. There, there's just something about helping a fellow human being, how enriching that is. And, and, you know, you wouldn't get that experience unless you did volunteer or did get a chance to directly work with someone. So I love this program, and hopefully it will open up the doors for more people to get into the line of work of hospice and dementia and maybe even caregiving and go on further in the healthcare vertical. So very exciting. So this is a new program. How did we mm-hmm. find out about this? They can call Hospice of the Valley and say, I'm interested in that college partners program. You know, what's really neat about it is we've had some student feedback on it. And some of the things students say when they spend time with dementia patients is amazing. I mean, everything from when my grandpa had dementia, my parents kind of kept me away. And I wish I knew then what I know now, because I would have really appreciated him and enjoyed spending time with him and telling him stories and being part of that journey. So some of them really, and they, and they love the wisdom and the wit of someone who is older, is a senior. And of course, the seniors love the energy and the enthusiasm and the perspective of someone young. Right. Oh, absolutely. No, I love that program. So we, we want, I want to talk about White Dove Store. So. Okay. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people know that we have four thrift stores. They're called White Dove Thrift Stores throughout the Valley. And most of the staff that you see in the store are volunteers. Mm-hmm. So if you like to volunteer, but you're not a patient kind of person, that's an opportunity for you. And if you're a person who just is so busy, but would love to be able to help Hospice of the Valley, put us on your list of places you would donate. Uh, you know, you have your favorites, but maybe add the White Dove Store because um, it's, a, it's a way that you can help support charity care. The proceeds from all of our White Dove Stores go to help pay for charity care for people who don't have Medicare coverage. There's some serious treasures in there. There was one just, yes. just down the street from me off of Camelback when, when we used to be office down there. I think it's Camelback and 7th Avenue. Um, real treasures. There are. There's always co- a collectible section, um, and then there's there's just all kinds of bargains. I've gotten a coach bag there, so it's it's awesome. There, there you go. There you go. All right, so uh, let's talk about hospice and how it is something that many people resist, and we deal with it every single day in Cyprus. You know, when someone that we're caring for is far enough along in the journey that it's time to introduce hospice and. You know, after all these years, 45 years for Hospice of the Valley, and, and really about 50 years since hospice started with Yale University back, I think it was 1972, um, still there's this stigma, and it's like the Grim Reaper, and every single time I recommend it, and those that chose to wait, when they do engage, invariably they say, we should have done this sooner. Yeah, It's amazing. So how do we get to this space, this place that we can tell people hospice isn't something you should be scared of. You should embrace it. It is part of the journey. And the nicest thing that I tell people is that any equipment that you need, any you know resources that you need, once you check that box and turn that switch on, it's there for you. It's all included. Yeah. They, they deliver the bed. Um, I think it's getting people to understand that hospice care is support support it's there for you and it's the patient and it's there for the family and it's not irreversible if you sign up for hospice and you decide i think i do want more treatment you simply sign yourself off right the benefit doesn't go away when you need it again it doesn't disappear. It doesn't diminish in any way. You are always in control. I think people think I, it's going to run out on me, so I have to wait to the very last minute to sign up. If you need the support, if you feel like you need the support, and you are eligible for hospice, by all means, have hospice support. And then if you decide, I feel good enough that I think I want some more treatment, you sign yourself off. So I think just letting people understand that it's it's not something that's locked in stone and that you don't have to wait till the very last second and you don't have to be afraid because if you're certainly in need of the support, you should have it as long as you need it. 
You know, I, I've had the pleasure of having your former exec director here on the show with me, Susan. Mm -hmm. uh, Susan Levine, you know, she made a comment, and it's always resonated with me, is many people think hospice is a place. It's not a place. It's a concept. And 98, 99% of the hospice is being delivered in the home. So yep. it's not a place. So it's about comfort. Yeah. That's it comes to you. That care comes to you right. wherever you are at home, assisted living, skilled nursing facility, your child's home. It comes to you. We have about 30 seconds. So what lasting thoughts would you like to leave beside the AHA event? Uh, I want to give your phone number 602-530-6900 or go to hov.org but real quickly what i would just say we are here for the community we're excited to open our dementia campus soon and we would love to see you at our signature aha art food wine experience on march 12th it will be so much fun Lindsay flood so great to see you i i can't believe it's been like a year and a half and this darn COVID thing has really <laughs> kept us apart so Let's hope that this is on its way out and we get to do these types of things more frequently. I will see you in a couple weeks at the AHA event. Make it a great day. Have a great weekend. We'll be back next Friday. Thank you, Linsu. Thank you. There's no place like home. You've been listening to Bob Roth's Health Futures. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, Call Cypress Home Care Solutions at 602-264-8009. That's 602-264-8009. Or visit cypresshomecare.com. Be sure to join Health Futures with Bob Roth every Friday at noon, right here on Money Radio 1510 and 105.3 FM. <laughs>